Set up and notice they're kind of unusually set up. You have a bass drum laying on the side, you see them standing around surrounded by multiple instruments. Well, uh, Patapan is actually a French Christmas carol. And uh, you probably don't know the words to it, but you'll be familiar with the tune when you hear it. It's a fairly common tune. Um, it's actually written, uh, well, we say this is written, it was published for the very first time in 1720. Uh, done by a uh, composer's name was Bernard de la Mondoya. All right, pardon my French. That's about as good as it gets. All right, uh, the original name of this song was Guigo Granton Tamarine, which translated into Southern means Willie, bring your little drum. All right, so uh, uh, it's an interesting little, little take on things. It actually revolves around the birth of Jesus and um, it's supposed to be presented from a perspective of the shepherds coming with very simple instruments, a drum and a fife or a flute. And that's basically back then, you know, somewhat of what they may have, have had. And uh, when you study the words of this, they actually have the words set up to sound like a drum and to sound like a flute. So uh, it's appropriate that the composer 
for this arrangement, uh, Porter Edom is actually a percussion major, and he arranged this to feature the percussion. This is technically as a percussion piece. I told the kids, this is kind of the predecessor to the little drummer boy. This is the original little drummer boy before the other one that we all knew came around. So uh, it's a unique piece. You'll see the percussion playing multiple sets uh, back here playing different things, sometimes with a hand on completely different spots. All right, trying to, trying to cover all these parts, but it's a unique, uh, unique take on this song. So we hope that you enjoy Hat Up Here.
pretty cool arrangement of that piece. I just told him, I said, you know, you don't want every song in every concert to be happy, light, and bouncy. You know, it's kind of, it's a little mysterious at some time. But it's a great arrangement of that piece. And a great job by our percussionists on that piece uh, and all those crazy parts in there. Uh, the next piece, uh, Grown Up Christmas List, one of those kind of modern Christmas songs you hear a lot now on the radio. Uh, probably the most famous arrangement out there is by Amy Grant. I guess I thought Amy Grant was the original singer of this song. Uh, come to find out she's not. The song was actually uh, written uh, and first performed by Natalie Cole, the daughter of course Nat King Cole. I'm trying to remember if I'd actually ever heard of her version of it as much as I have you know, Amy Grant's version out there. Uh, composed by actually David Foster, who of course is the modern day guru of producing and writing songs. Everybody from Natalie Cole to Amy Grant to uh, Mariah Carey to Michael Buble to Whitney Houston. You know, if, if they're major artists in the last, I don't know, probably since the late 60s, David Foster was probably either producer or wrote something for them. If you ever watch PBS enough, he comes on all the time his little specials, uh, presenting some of the songs that he's done. I'm trying to name some for the kids, I was like, uh, you know, Chariots of Fire? You know, what? St. Elmo's Fire? No, they had not So, we've got some, some educating to do. I think, I, I will be honest, I think one of them had heard St. Elmo's Fire before. So. But uh, the next piece we're going to perform for you is Grown Up Christmas Lists. And if you know it,
the uh, next selection we perform for you. All right, you'll tell them out. I know we're all familiar with that, with this selection, and um, we're doing a little history and background on this song. Uh, we'll talk to the students about it today, just so they can focus on what they need to focus on to get ready to play it while I'm talking to you. Um, you'll look at probably most books, you'll see it written down uh, by John Wesley Work. And uh, John Wesley Work, we're not sure exactly how much of it he may have collaborated or, or, or provided for. John Wesley Work is the first African American to go and collect spirituals throughout, uh, throughout the country. And uh, we saw the first version of Go Tell It on the Mountain. Uh, first published in 1865, and his second song is of Jubilee. And uh, it's very important, I was telling the students this, um, he grew up in Nashville, actually uh, had a master's in Latin, taught Latin and Greek, and actually uh, was at Harvard University a student as well. Very well uh, rounded individual, and spent his time, besides teaching, going around and collecting spirituals because he knew that the, the way of uh, saving those things didn't exist necessarily. So he took it upon himself, as others did during that time, um, to go around and start collecting these songs that would possibly no longer exist uh, had someone not taken that, uh, that initiative to do so. So if you ever see that name, John Wesley Work Jr. or John Wesley Work II, written somewhere on uh, version of Go Tell Over the Mountain. He's the one that actually, I call it, saved that song. Got it, got it wrote down somewhere so we can have it and we'll continue to have it uh, throughout our history. So, uh, with this one, um, there is a solo in this one. That was, uh, by the way, let me say this one. It's Chelsea Thompson on solo on the other song and there is another trumpet solo on this one uh, with uh, Tanner Murray on a trumpet solo on this one. So we hope that you enjoy Go Tell It Over the Mountain.
collection for this evening. Uh, I just want to go over a few housekeeping things, I guess. So make sure we're all kind of getting things ended up here before Christmas. Number one, uh, if you still have a hat, a marching band hat at home, we need those back. Preferably by uh, next Thursday's Christmas party stuff. That would be great. All right, so uh, they can bring back their hat. We have their jackets. Uh, they still have their pants. Most of them got. We may have a couple that still don't have their pants in. If they got their pants or their hat, all right, we need those back. They can keep their shoes. You're welcome. They can keep their gloves. They don't want those. All right, so we need hat and pants back if they haven't turned those in. Uh, Saturday is uh, district band auditions up in Applin County. They have had their times now for uh, a few weeks. So if they come to you and say tomorrow, oh gosh, I gotta be in Applin County this time. They've known for a while. All right, so have a discussion with them. All right, but uh, if you need directions, okay, you get away across and go through the woods and go to the block chair, go straight on up to the school. When you get in Applin County, it'll be on, on your left, okay? You go past the big giant cannon too far. All right, so uh, but that is Saturday for uh, a whole bunch of these guys. Raise your hand if you're auditioning Saturday. So I said, how many of these people are going out? Quite a, quite a, quite a lot of these guys. So, uh, we wish them luck. That's, uh, there's no pressure involved. Uh, so, uh, so I'm sure they'll, they'll represent us well uh, Saturday. Uh, let's see, um, if you did not, before you came in, if you did not go by the art room, the art room will still be open when we finish. Uh, for you to go in and look at the uh, art exhibits that we have out for Christmas, as well as you can see our door. Uh, we won the door decoration uh, prize for the school. So, uh, unfortunately, the home rooms didn't stand a chance because we have more people than they do. So, uh, and uh, the band kids were like, oh, pizza, we don't get to have pizza, right? So, uh, right, you don't get to have pizza. No, it's always you know, pizza and Chick-fil-A, that's all they live on this time of year. But um, they won, so uh, uh, they're going to be receiving pizza, I believe, tomorrow, right? Yeah, onions for me. That's what I, onion lover pizza for these guys. So. Uh, special thanks, that was actually uh, Savannah and Caroline that uh, kind of come up with the idea for everything and then they had some help on it. Uh, Heaven helped it along and then a lot of others helped them out to moment there. So, uh, uh, yes, your child, unfortunately, is a snowflake. If you haven't seen the door, okay? Please don't read into that other than it's snowed, okay? But uh, they're stuck up on the wall. Some of them have held in there, some of them fell to the floor. All right, so uh, there's meaning in that. That's why I told them. So, but uh, we did uh, appreciate those that helped with that such a good job with that. Uh, the party, the Christmas party, is next Thursday. It starts at 5.30. Your students coming. Uh, remember, Crazy Santa will be going on at that time. It's always an interesting thing to behold. You know, students trying to not become violent as someone takes something from them that they really want and give them something that they really do not want. So it's always fun, but uh, Remind them if you're going to be there on 5 30 when it starts. It'll be done at 8. Please have your child picked up by 8 because I have tickets to see Star Wars that night at like 10. And I need to be there. Okay? And just, just to make sure everything turns out the way it's supposed to. Uh, but uh, other than that, I don't think there's anything else um, to remind you of. A special thanks once again for coming out. Thanks to our administration uh, for being here. Special thanks to Charlton Sports. Coming and broadcast it. So if you have someone that missed it, they're going to go there and find it and catch up on, on what happened here tonight. So, uh, plans coming up, right? Of course, the uh, festival is rolling around, like they're popping up right here at the beginning of March. So, we'll start hot and heavy into that actually tomorrow. They'll turn this music and uh, you can ask Mr. Sloan. I've already been letting their scores all over the place. It's laid out over my desk, everything from LaBelle Helene. All this fancy opera music to some crazy stuff that shouldn't have been written. I, if I were a judge, I couldn't read it. Like, it sounds good to me. Right, so, uh, but uh, these guys, I'm sure, will do a good job as we get ready for that. So, once again, thanks for coming out tonight. We hope that you enjoyed it. Um, we're going to close things out with probably one of the most iconic Christmas songs uh, there is, and that's Sleigh Ride. Funny. Um, 
it mentions uh, when you look at the lyrics to it, the original lyrics to it, there's nothing about Christmas mentioned. Uh, the story with this with Leroy Anderson, this was actually written during the middle of a, a, a heat wave in uh, July of 1946. He was so tired of the heat, he started thinking about things that made him think of anything other than heat. And it's funny, it took him a year and a half to complete this song. And it literally takes about two minutes to play. But it took him a year and a half to, to you know, because of other things he's going around. Leroy Anderson, for you. Got some interesting music out there. Never heard of a typewriter, and you can do listen to the time. You need to hear an orchestra playing with the time. It's a great piece of music. But uh, Sleigh Ride, uh, as I told you, it was originally published as an instrumental piece. Uh, first performed by the Boston Pops, and Arthur Fiedler was there conducting them. It is their signature piece, because they're the first ones to ever play it. And uh, the words that, if you ever hear it on the radio, the words actually weren't uh, penned until 1950. Or not penned by, um, by the Lord Anderson, by a different guy. And uh, I didn't know this, and I told the kids this, and I said, you know, they looked at me like I was my own. I had, but the Steve Metcalf is guy that did a, a bibliography on Leroy Anderson. And this is back in 2004, so things may have changed. You have to look at, listen to the words of this very carefully. It says, Sleigh Ride has been performed and recorded by a wider array of musical artists than any other piece in the history of Western music. I would have never guessed that. Had that been on Jeopardy? That song would not have popped in my mind. But if you think about it, over all the different genres of music that there are, and the ways this thing can be played, it, would, it might make sense. So uh, we hope that uh, once again you've enjoyed being here tonight. We appreciate you coming out and supporting us. And we're going to close things tonight with Slay.
Thank you for watching this presentation of the 2019 Christmas concert by the Child and Family Family Pride. We also have a hard copy that got on a hard drive. We're going to upload the hard copy up to our YouTube channel in its entirety. I saw the uh, internet was going way out there until the end of the concert. You may have missed that last song. I'm going to get back to it. If you guys know if the last song is ready, it doesn't matter. Either way, I'm going to upload it to YouTube in its entirety. So we want to appreciate it. I really appreciate y'all watching that. I'm going to come out here to see you. And thank you. And I wish all of y'all a Merry Christmas. We'll see y'all Saturday night. Well, actually, we'll see y'all Friday afternoon live right here in Brooklyn. We're going to middle school. Varsity and middle school wrestling tomorrow afternoon starting at 5 o'clock. We'll be live for the food and we'll be back over here. We'll be back over here. Saturday evening for the Indians and the Ladies against Falcon County. That'll be live Saturday night, so we appreciate y'all watching. Hope you enjoyed the concert. We enjoyed bringing it to you. I love doing it every year. Y'all have a great night, everybody, and Merry Christmas.